Hello and welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you have been enjoying the stories told on this channel feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and help the channel grow. On today's episode, we will delve into the life and crimes of one of the most powerful Cuban gangsters of all time, Jose Miguel Battle. As a Cuban immigrant and former police officer, Battle's ascent to the apex of the New York underworld seemed unlikely. However, during the 1970s, Battle formed a formidable crew of Cuban-American mobsters with the aim of ruthlessly seizing control of criminal activities in New York. Directly competing with notable Mafia members like Fat Tony Salerno, Battle established himself as one of the most powerful non-Italian gangsters in the region. Battle was born on September 14, 1929, in the municipality of Alto Sango in Cuba. He grew up as one of six boys, raised by his mother and father. Battle came of age during a tumultuous period in Cuba, by the age of five, the country was embroiled in a militant revolution as Fulgencio Batista seized power in 1933. This was followed by years of uncertainty, with many families living well below the poverty line. Despite his family's struggles, Battle managed to attend school in the larger municipality of Santiago de Cuba. He was said to excel academically, continuing his education in the Santiago de Cuba region. At the age of 20, Battle began working as a police officer in the region before being transferred to the Havana Police Department in the 1950s. Over the next decade, he worked his way up the ranks of the police force, eventually taking on larger cases. Ironically, given his later career, Battle became a vice cop, responsible for making large-scale drug busts, breaking up illegal gambling operations, and combating organized crime. Despite his position, it has been alleged that Battle, like many other police officers at the time, accepted bribes and selectively enforced the law. There are even allegations that he accepted bribes from prominent members of the American Mafia, including Meyer Lansky. Witnessing the wealth generated by these powerful organized crime figures, as well as the growing instability in his country, Battle decided to immigrate to the United States. Upon landing in the US, Battle had little time to settle into his new life, as in 1960, he became entangled in the Bay of Pigs invasion. Having been in America for only a few months, the CIA allegedly turned to Battle, a former high-ranking police officer, to assist with their upcoming invasion of Cuba. Specifically, Battle was tasked with aiding in the training of Cuban exiles who were to participate in the invasion. Embracing this role, Battle spent the next year training these men. This effort culminated in the infamous day in April of 1961 when Battle, alongside an army of Cuban exiles, attempted to liberate Cuba. This well-documented failure resulted in the deaths or capture of almost all the soldiers involved, primarily due to the lack of air support provided. Battle found himself among the surviving soldiers captured by the Cuban army. As a consequence of his involvement in the attempted invasion, Battle was imprisoned in a Cuban jail for two years. Enduring dire conditions during this period, Battle seized the opportunity to return to the United States as soon as possible. He was able to do so in 1963, at the age of 33. Battle settled in the Union City section of New Jersey, seeking to embark on the next chapter of his life. Settling into New Jersey in the mid-1960s, Battle entered the heyday of organized crime in America. With the Italian Mafia controlling everything from gambling and loan sharking to unions and construction, Battle sought to carve out a piece of this criminal enterprise for himself. Leveraging his alleged previous connections to the Mafia, Battle initially cultivated a working relationship with prominent mobsters in the area. During the first few years of building up his organization, Battle chose to collaborate with the Mafia rather than oppose it. This strategy allowed Battle to enter into local rackets, including loan sharking, gambling, and narcotics trafficking. As he began forming his own crew, composed of other Cuban immigrants, Battle's business ventures started to generate wealth. Throughout the remainder of the 1960s, Battle continued to expand his crew and extend the reach of his organization in the illicit business landscape of the area. During this expansion, Battle and his crew stumbled upon one of their most profitable rackets, the number game. This form of lottery, typically managed by organized crime figures, involved people throughout the neighborhood placing bets on specific numbers drawn during weekly or monthly draws. The number operation Battle ran became known as Bolita, translating to Little Ball. With the popularity of this relatively low-stakes gambling, many residents participated. From this simple racket alone, Battle and his operation began to see millions flow in. 
This rapid influx of wealth facilitated the expansion of his crew and influence in the area but also led to a rift in the relationship between Battle and the Italian Mafia. Observing the alleged millions pouring in from his various rackets, Battle sought expansion. Recognizing the opportunity to establish illicit businesses throughout New York, Battle began encroaching into Mafia-controlled territories. This move was viewed as disrespectful by most families, particularly Anthony Fat Tony Salerno, a high-ranking member of the Genovese family. Despite Salerno's prior allowance of Battle to open Bolitas throughout the neighborhood, his expansion attempts were perceived as greed. Despite threats from the Italians directed at his crew members, Battle persisted in opening more Bolita operations across New York. The continuous expansion of this number operation led some to estimate that Battle and his organization, later dubbed the corporation, were making upwards of $40 million a year. However, before Battle could further this expansion, he encountered a serious legal issue in 1977. He was arrested for the murder of Ernesto Torres, allegedly a hitman within his own organization. Standing trial for this murder, Battle was found guilty and sentenced to 30 years in prison. The prosecutor in the case claimed, Mr. Battle paid a gunman $15,000, gave him six cartridges, and ordered him to put one right between the eyebrows. This hefty sentence seemingly condemned Battle to life off the streets and halted the expansion of the Cuban number rackets. However, due to a successful appeal, Battle managed to reduce the sentence to only two years, enabling him to resume running his organization into the 1980s. Despite the immense profits both the corporation and the mafia were raking in, a war erupted. It began when the corporation allegedly burned down a numbers racket run by the Lucchese crime family. This act of aggression prompted a sit-down between members of the Lucchese family and the corporation to mediate the conflict. However, the sit-down ended in a shootout, resulting in the death of a Cuban associate, Pedro Acosta. This killing marked the onset of the war between the Cubans and the Italian mafia. As the early 1980s unfolded, Violence between the two groups escalated almost daily, with operations being torched throughout the city. This violence persisted for about a year until increased law enforcement efforts began taking down key mafia figures, including Fat Tony Salerno, sentencing them to 100 years or more in prison. With the government's growing efforts to combat organized crime and the implementation of the RICO Act, the two groups dialed back their aggression, leading to an uneasy truce. During this period, Battle aimed to expand his operation to Miami, officially relocating to the area in 1987. Recognizing the massive Cuban population in Miami, Battle rapidly expanded his organization's reach and power throughout the city. The Committee on Organized Crime estimated the corporation's membership to be around 2,500 at this time, with members located in both New York and Miami. With revenue streams from lucrative operations such as the numbers racket, the corporation allegedly remained heavily involved in narcotics trafficking, extortion, and loan sharking. Due to these activities, Battle was listed among Dade County's wealthiest men in 1987, with an estimated net worth of $175 million, equivalent to almost $500 million today. With this immense wealth, Battle relocated to Lima, Peru, in the 1990s, where he opened a casino named Hotel Krillin. After establishing the casino, he returned to Florida, living a life of pure luxury throughout the remainder of the 1990s and into the 2000s, as the corporation continued expanding throughout the US and South America. However, Battle's life of crime finally caught up with him in 2004 at the age of 75. After living as one of the wealthiest gangsters in America for the past three decades, Battle faced serious legal trouble in 2004. This occurred as part of a massive series of arrests that saw 21 members of the corporation, including Battle himself and his son Battle Jr., being arrested on a variety of charges. These charges included five counts of murder, four counts of arson, multiple counts of drug trafficking, as well as charges related to the numbers operation. The government had an extremely strong case against Battle and the corporation, with the majority of those arrested being charged and sent to prison. Battle Jr. received a sentence of 15 years and was ordered to pay around $640 million back to the government. Another high-ranking member of the corporation, Julio Acuna, received a life sentence and was ordered to pay $1.4 billion. Faced with these massive sentences and in poor health, Battle pleaded guilty, resulting in a 20-year prison sentence. However, due to his failing health, Battle served only two years before passing away in 2006 at the age of 77. Thank you for watching another episode of Underworld Diary. 
If you enjoy the stories told on the channel feel free to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. If there are any topics you would like to see covered in future videos feel free to leave a comment down below, if not I will see you next time with another story from the underworld.